Hello, this is part two of learning about P5.js and JavaScript. And we, last time we left off with a circle on a screen. And I hope you've actually had a look at some of Daniel Schiffman's introductory videos to P5 and JavaScript. So there's a link down below to them. Um, but they're much more extensive than these and they'll fill in the gaps. Um, these are more of a quick introduction. But where were we last time? Okay, so this is, um, I've logged into the editor, into the P5 editor here, which is editor.p5js.org. And just to recap again, if we go to um, P5.js, um, just Googling that, there, there we go. So the editor's here, this link here. Um, I've already got a tab open. And just to recap, I have logged in. So you can see I've got my account up here. Um, if you're not logged in, uh, create an account or use Google and GitHub um, to log in. Um, and I've got auto refresh turned on, which really helps. Um, you can name your sketch up here, but this is what it looks like. So let's hit play. Right, we've got a gray square there. And that's because we've got a um, thing here uh, creating a background at 220, which is the grey level, which we, we, we talked about last time. And um, actually, more importantly, we've created a canvas. So in the setup function up here, we create a canvas that's 400 by 400, and that's in pixels, so that creates this square. And as you remember last time, we had a circle. So the circle, let's make a circle here, at 100, 150 wide, uh, 50 diameter. And there it is. and Let's just recap again where we found that. So you go down to the reference library here and um, you can find the circle under shape and 2D primitives. And what I tend to do is just start typing things in here because um, it's quicker. And there's your circle. And here's your description of what it is, the syntax, that uh, there are these three things in here which in JavaScript are called arguments. Um, and in the P5 JS website, they call them parameters because they're also parameters, um, but a more codey way is call um, you would call these arguments. So if you look at other tutorials and they talk about arguments, that's these things. And arguments have a comma after them. So there's a circle. Now you get to this stage and you think, well, I've made a circle on screen. I could do that in a drawing program a lot quicker, a lot simpler. Um, but code is and JavaScript is about doing dynamic things. Dynamic things are things that change over time or respond to events, and that's where this is powerful. So I think this is where we should start doing some JavaScripty stuff in amongst the P5 stuff. P5 is JavaScript, but you can also throw any other JavaScript in here as well, and that's what we're going to start to do. So what if I want that to move around the screen? How would I make that happen? Well. I want to change one of these values. So uh, this value here is the x value. So let's make that a bit bigger. So let's make it 120. And we'll see it jump to the right. Um, if I make it 140, it jumps to the right again. So it's sort of animating right. I mean, animating really badly, but animating nevertheless. So how can I do that automatically? How can I make that number increase? Well, that's where we can use a variable. Now, there's a lot of ways to make variables. and you will see things like, uh, not r, but var. Var is a way you can create a variable. Another way to create a variable is with, is with, with the word let. Um, let is a bit newer. I'm going to talk about let, but if you see an old tutorial and it has the word var, that works as well. It's fine. JavaScript is super forgiving, actually. There's a number of ways you can do things, and they all kind of work. Um, but it's best to learn um, the most recent ways, mostly. Um, so. Don't worry about that for now. Let's just get into it. Um, I'm going to say let. Uh, and you can put anything you want now. So the word let is sort of creates this thing. It's like a container you can chuck stuff into. It's called a variable. So let's say let bananas um, equal zero. So we've made a thing called bananas, and it's equal to zero. So I've given it a value already. You don't actually have to give it a value initially, but I'm going to give it a value of zero. So now I've got this thing called bananas, and the word let enables me to create this. Right, and now I can replace one of these things down here with bananas. So let's uh, replace the words, uh, let's replace this, the x parameter, 180, with bananas. 
Now, the circle jumps to the beginning because bananas is equal to zero. So now I can actually change this number up here. So if I type in 100, it'll jump across. And uh, as you can see, as I change this, it moves. Now, initially, this just seems silly, right? I've done a lot more writing, and that has done nothing for me. Um, and also, you might be thinking, why have I put in bananas? Now, I've put in bananas just because um, I just want to show you that it doesn't really matter what you call this. Like, it's your variable. You can call it anything you want, apart from calling it things already exist. So some things already exist. So like we're not going to use the word background or circle or draw because these things already exist. So let's just, but let's make a value that's actually useful to us. So um, a value that would be useful to me would be something to do with what it's going to do. So I'm going to call it X position. Um, and I've got an error, right? Bananas is not defined. That's because I've left bananas in there. So let's just copy that, paste it in there, right? Now it works again. I've called it X position. Now X position hasn't got some sort of special thing within P5. It's just for me. It 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 means something. It, I'm talking about the X position, so I'm going to call it X, X position. Um, I could you know I could call it X pos if I wanted X pos. Um, a bit shorter, you know that works as well. But I'm I don't want to be short. I want to be more descriptive because um, it'll help you out perhaps. Now. It started at 140, and it's going to stay at 140 forever. Nothing's going to change. But I, as I said, I wanted to do dynamic stuff. So let's like, how do we make this circle move? Right. Well, let's put this as zero to begin with, and I'll stick it on the left-hand side. And let's make a new line here, and let's increase it. So how do we do that? Right. Well, we can say x position um, equals itself, so x position again, oh, if I can type, plus 1. And now it moves. So what that's doing, every single time we go round this loop, actually just to recap, I think we said this last time, but this draw function here is like an animation loop. So it's doing this thing, it's making a background, making a circle, doing whatever you've got below it, and then it goes back to the beginning. Background circle this, background circle this, and it goes around forever. And my circle's gone off the screen now, so you can't see it, but if I hit play again, it plays again. So what's happening now is it it's, it's, uh, starts at zero, so we start at the top here. We've got this thing called exposition that equals zero, and then we do the setup function, we create this canvas. Now this only happens once, setup happens once. And then we get into draw, the draw function, and then you're stuck in here. It goes around forever. And we've got nothing else in here, so there aren't other things that are going to happen yet. Um, so we, let's hit play again, you can see it again. So we get down to here, draws a background, draws a circle, draws x, um, well, draws a circle at zero, uh, the x position is zero. And then it goes, uh, the x position, which is itself, so it's zero, equals itself plus one. So zero plus one is one. And it does this all again. Now the exposition is 1. So then this thing that's 1 equals this thing plus 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. Now it draws again, and the circle is at 2 in its exposition. And it does this again and again and again and moves. So let's demonstrate a few things. If I, if I change that, we've got auto refresh turned on, so it's going to automatically replay this when I change it. So make 10. And it gets really quick, because every time now it's adding 10 to it. Um, let's make it 0.1, and that moves a lot slowly, uh, a lot more slowly. Sorry. So it's it's um, you know it goes around here, it goes to background, draws this thing at zero, then it draws it at 0 0.1, and then 0 0.2, then 0 0.3, and it moves across. So it's moving ever so slowly across the screen, but you've made something dynamic. So what you've learned here, just to recap, is you've learned about variables. You say let, make up any word you like. Within reason, there are some characters and things that it won't like, but are just any normal letters. Um, and then you give it a value. And then in this draw function, which is this animating loop, we're then modifying this variable, just adding stuff to it. And because you probably might look at some tutorials in the future, I'm going to show you just a couple of other ways of doing this that do exactly the same thing. So rather than say, x position equals x position plus a thing. 
Um, it's so common to do this, you can actually write it in a different way. We can actually say plus equals. Now that does exactly the same thing. Plus equals is like saying this thing, x position, just equals the addition of this number. So it's just basically doing exactly that line. So that line and that line mean the same thing. Now what's really common to do is it's really common to add one to something. It's just because you need to do this a lot in programming. You need to make a number bigger by one. It's just so common. There's actually another bit of script that does exactly that. And you can just write it this way. X position plus plus. And that basically just adds one to it every time it, it sort of hits that bit in the loop. Um, because I want finer control, like I don't always want it one, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to do it this way, uh, plus equals 1, oh, plus equals 0 0.1 even. Um, however, if you want, you don't have to use the shortest way of doing things. Sometimes it's actually better just to write things the long way because it makes it easier to read and when you come back to it next time you know exactly what's going on there. Um, now, that circle's gone, right? And I, what we never really covered was why are you drawing a background and then a circle every single time. Isn't it weird to do that? Why you know why why aren't we drawing the background up in setup and not down here? Well, you know, we can do that. Let's cut background and I've now removed the background, so that's kinda weird. There's no background. It's making this stripe here. What, you know, what's happening there? Well you know I've got a black column. That looks very strange. We could put the background back up here. Now the background gets drawn and we're drawing loads of circles. So there's no background after every circle, so you're seeing every circle. And why does it look like a black line? Well, let's just make this a big bigger. Let's make it 10. Right. Now you can see that it draws a circle every 10 pixels. So we see that black line is actually the, uh, what's called the, the stroke, the outline of the circle. Um, but we don't need a background at all. We could just remove the background and it just draws it on whatever color the editor here is. It's actually telling you that the background is now transparent, so P5 can have a transparent background. Now I want to sort of demonstrate what's going on here a bit more, so let's go into the reference. And um, I want to show you some stuff to do with other ways of getting variables, other ways of um, changing something's position without making your own variable. There are some variables that exist already. Now if we go down here we can go to events now. There are these mouse events. Right, I'm going to go mouse x. So mouse x, you can actually see the example here. That line is sticking on to the position of my mouse. And it tells you that there's a system variable. So a system variable is like a variable built into P5. You're not making your own. Um, it has some already, which is why you can't use any word. And I mentioned already you can't choose any word you want, almost any word, but some are kind of protected or already used. So mouse x being one of them. Now. We could read all this and try and understand it, but let's just do it. So uh, let's delete this stuff and delete this stuff. And I'll put my background back in because um, I want a background for a moment. And it's got an error because it says, I don't know what this X position thing is. And that's quite right. It doesn't because we haven't made it. We haven't made the let X position yet. I'm going to put in mouse x and it's gone pink now the pink tells you it's one of the p5 system variables like the one of the ones that p5 already knows about so now this you see it's sticking to my mouse only in the x dimension right up and down doesn't do anything because y value is always 100 whereas the x value is wherever my mouse is and that's another sort of dynamics it's actually uh, rather than i'm making a variable that i'm increasing it's responding to an input. It's responding to my mouse input. So P5, you can set up animations which you control, or you can set up circumstances which um, are controlled by it reacting to things, like 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 the mouse. And you probably guess that we can also type in another thing here. Let's do mouse Y. And now it moves with X and Y. So it's uh, you know, up and down, left and right. It's basically just stuck onto the mouse here. Um, and this can show you another interesting thing. Let's now remove the background. Now, there's two ways of removing it. I can just delete it, and it's gone. Another thing I can do is 
comment it out. Now commenting something out means you just put a slash slash and that line stays there but stops working. But it lets you see it, you know. So I, I, I you know, in the future I can delete those two slashes and it'll come back again. But that means no background is being drawn and I get a funky little drawing program instead. So again, if I put this background back in, now it's drawing exactly the same circles, the same stuff, but it draws a background every single time before it draws a circle. So as I said, this is a loop. So what's happening is drawing background circle, background circle, background circle every time. And if I delete the background, or just put a slash slash to comment it out, I don't get any backgrounds. But if you think, well, I do want a background, I do want a background behind them, then as I showed you before, we can actually copy that put it into the setup. Now remember, setup happens only once, so it's going to make the canvas draw a background, and now it's just going to draw loads of circles. So that is the distinction between setup and draw. So recapping on this, what we've played with is the idea of making an element within this, the circle, in this case dynamic, and you can edit maybe the x value by using a variable, um, or you can use a system variable like mouse x and mouse y and there are quite a few system variables there are other things you can do and we made a simple drawing program which is great um, and I think that opens up hopefully some of the possibilities of p5 because what we've done so far is dead simple um, you can see in here if I, if I delete that in eight lines of code we've got a drawing program and actually there's a space there let's get rid of that look seven lines of code we've got a drawing program so we started off by saying, you know, why use this instead of a drawing program? Um, and then we've ended up making a drawing program. So I hope that's given a quick insight onto, into some of the power of P5. And again, follow the coding train on YouTube and look at Daniel Schiffman's videos. He's made hundreds of videos about many, many things you can do with this. And I'll continue to make um, some videos on some of the more complex things you can do within P5. Thanks very much.